All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. If you thought last week was crazy, then I hope you're ready for this one because we have more earnings, more important economic data, the end of the month, and then... Jerome Powell. So I have the breakdown for you. We're going to go over all of that, but to give you some context of where we're at and the carnage that the market has been going through, the market topped out this year around 4,600, 460 on this buy. Right now we're at 410, and here is back to last August to last October. That was 430 down to about 360. It did go 20 points lower for around like 20 minutes and then came back up. Yeah, we were live for all of it. It was crazy, but generally speaking, this top to bottom was about 70 points. So, so far, 460 to 410, we have done 50. If we are going to replicate this move exactly, that means the SPY comes down to 390 flat. So where we end up at the end of this week, what it gives us for the end of the year, I mean, it is going to be a lot of fireworks, Chad. So I hope you're ready for all of it. I got the breakdown. I have some plays and then we're going to be all ready and live throughout the week. So make sure you guys are subscribed. YouTube.com. Oh, wait. No, I messed it up. We're live. YouTube.com. So that's All right. Yeah. But like, like subscribe to this channel too okay run it baby yeah welcome to the top it's the joints on the last live in the hills but still get a spread started with a live but still reinvest it fear how i fear then you feel less and bless it i just want the lesson i just want protection i'm up and i'm down but the sound like progression mama never plans if he waits for perfection i think it's to the down yeah. uh, right off the bat ladies and gentlemen i was getting excited i wanted to get straight to it you can see most of this week through the trading economics calendar. If you go there and you see what we have in store, you're going to notice there is a lot of different events. So the tricky part about this week, it's going to be breaking it down into two sections and then what is going to be more important and then where are the markets going to be focused on. So like I'm telling you, from Monday all the way to Friday, you're going to have a lot of events. The way I would break up this week, you split it up into two. There's pre-Powell and then there's going to be post-Powell. So there is some data on Monday and Tuesday that's kind of important. But for the most part, Wednesday is the day of Powell. And that's where all the action is going to happen. But this is where it gets really good. The Jolts jobs openings, they are the morning of Powell. So if you remember me saying that it was on Tuesday, no, it is on Wednesday, 30 minutes after the bell. That is really important because the last two job openings, we've moved around a lot. And now leading into Powell, you're going to have an event that will have the ability to move the bonds. And then it leads into the follow-up because after Powell, that's for the rest of the week. Post-Powell, Thursday, you got Apple earnings. You still have 100 of the other companies. And then Friday, you get the non-farm payrolls. And then that'll factor into whatever we get from this week. And then everybody is off from there. So that's how I would be looking at this week broadly if you do want to go through the calendar you'll see on Monday there's a lot of like overseas data I think it's like European consumer confidence then a couple of GDPs and then throughout the start of the week you're going to get a lot of uh, CPI data from some of the European nations but other than that on Monday it's not on the calendar there's an Apple Monday announcement for MacBooks and then China they're having a key financial policy gathering day it is a rare closed door event led by Xi Jinping last week we heard a lot about stimulus so this could be interesting, but for the most part, I mean, we haven't really responded to China stimulus news or last week there was a huge phenomena of China really running and doing its own thing and then U.S. markets not really responding anywhere close to how they traded. So that's for Monday, Tuesday. You'll go through the calendar. You'll get more GDP stuff, like I'm saying, a lot more GDPs from those uh, from those countries and then ECI on Tuesday. This one is is actually kind of important. It shouldn't be the most important. It's an hour before the bell. I think you also get like Dallas Fed and then uh, what other, I think like ISM services or manufacturing or no, that's on Wednesday. That's also uh, Wednesday has all the big stuff, but I would watch out for the ECI on Tuesday. That's a big one. And then even Tuesday night or Monday night leading into Tuesday, there is Japan. They're supposed to make a big decision. It was getting really hyped up because they were doing all of this emergency buying and the last uh, or leading up into this in the uh, preceding weeks, but now everybody is saying nothing is going to happen. So we'll see what happens, but that could have the ability to move the dollar and we'll see with the broader volatility
ability if, again, the market wants to pick up and do whatever it wants and go crazy. So that's all Tuesday. And then after Tuesday, that's where you get those global PMIs, ISM manufacturing, Jolt's Jobs openings, and then Powell. And then Thursday, Bank of England, Powell Digestion, more global ISMs. And then Friday, the non-farms, which is expected to be at like 173, which is very low considering last month broke out but we'll go over that by the time we get over Powell and then we'll really see where the market is at so that's the schedule if I could say anything to prepare you for this week the first thing I would tell you is get familiar with what has happened over the last Fed meetings and what I mean by that is don't forget that last meeting that was the pause it has now been 30 days since the Fed has paused if you remember us talking about the history of the first cut since the last rate hike well essentially now if we do not raise at this meeting on Wednesday this is going to now be the second zero that will be two meetings in a row of not raising you know Powell said he does not want to be Volcker he doesn't want to cut but I'm sure as well I don't know if they want to do the stop and go too much that's what was so interesting about the dot plot but now this is a big part of the story here because if we do go another meeting now and he does in fact pause here on Wednesday which is expected by the next time we get to SCP and C Powell it will be 60 days since they raised rates in one of the largest rate rising campaigns that we have ever seen so this is pretty important and I think a lot of people have been overlooking at and we're seeing all the volatility in the market and now all of the talk about when they raise when they cut when they cut after stopping and all of this debate you will be getting now more evidence tomorrow and hopefully by then we are able to see what the bonds are going to do otherwise until now even Powell afterwards too it is going to be insane so this week now I think we're going to get a lot of info the only other thing I'll tell you is that when we did this little bottom out thing in October it was borderline the same week that we had remember it was a one-two punch with Jerome Powell and the Fed and all of that I think Powell was afterwards but you had that bottoming sell off the extra 20 points and then start to go up that was their non-farms or the CPI day this week I'm saying we have this like really action-packed calendar it's dealing with so much it is going to be in essence something like this but it doesn't mean that we're going to get that bounce and now to finalize October I was saying it was going to be green I liked it in the seasonality if not we have two days pretty much now by Tuesday if we're not up here you are going to break one very big historical trend and now a lot of people are still talking about hey we're below 4200 you've now paused for 30 almost 60 days a lot of that hard landing talk may come back and then the top it all off I almost forgot you still are gonna have hundreds of earnings this week that we're gonna have to get through and these will all speak to the economy and all of that so I'll go over this more you'll have McDonald's tomorrow morning to hold you over than even Pfizer on Tuesday but companies like AMD CVS PayPal Airbnb Eli Lilly Novo then of course like we're saying Apple on Thursday that will be like the final big one and then we'll really see if the Magnificent 7 can hold this up or if that's it's not enough to withstand Powell. So, Chad, I hope you're ready for all of it. But now, let us get into the place. So, uh, right off the bat, I only have a very short list. It's going to be a quick one. The number one play I'm going to say watch this week is GLD. Whether you want to play it or not, you have to watch what it's doing because it's starting to approach all-time highs. And a lot of this has started since we've had the global tensions, even on Friday I really don't think the market was responding to the Israel-Gaza thing. I think it was generally the dollar, the bonds, what's going on with earnings and all of this drama we've been dealing with and setting up into the carnage of this week. But one thing we noticed is that there was headlines on Israel oil would get a bid and then gold started to break out so I was saying things like short this last week but I said I'm not going to take the play just yet because it's either going to die on one headline or it could still wreck you and now the fact that it's going up here and how people are responding I would keep an eye out this because it should be following along with the bond so play number one is going to be GLD and gold I would watch it as an indicator or as a play it's either going to go crazy if it really does pop off with again the Fed pausing again that's part of 
of the whole broader dynamic, almost 60 days of no rate hikes. And then now with some of the global tensions, that could be a big part. But play number two, it's going to be oil. These are the futures right now. I'm recording this one a little later. So we got to see this even after this like gradual invasion, you're watching oil already respond. So these two, I would watch this week. Other than that, though, I think it's going to boil down to the health of the big tech or the magnificent seven watching how that plays out keep an eye on apple if we get the art all clear from powell and the data i would focus on the plays but otherwise if powell is not good and the data is not good and we start watching the market take a shift i don't think it matters what any of the other earnings or anything else does from here so we'll see how it all plays out it should be exciting but chad that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. And I need you to remember every opportunity that gets born out of the moments where you get scared, fearful, the market looks this or that, something is always born out of that. And I hope you never forget that for the law term, baby. But Chad, let's start off this week good. Get ready. I hope you have some rest it's gonna be wild but you train for this you got the armor everything's ready to go but i love you drink that water stay hydrated healthy i'll see you in the morning and peace i'll turn <laughs>